very good morning to all of you i once again welcome you all to this current lecture in the last lecture we started the first important spectroscopic technique called as the microwave spectroscopy in which we studied the introduction the principle and the other aspects regarding this microwave spectroscopy as well as we completed one important point from this spectroscopy that is called as the rotation spectrum for the rigid diatomic molecule and we derive one equation that is i is equal to mu into r square for moment of inertia around the center of gravity point capital c once we derive this equation we are interested to calculate the rotation energy for a diatomic molecule in a unit of joules now this is a F, uh, ej in joules is equal to h square upon 8 pi square i into j into j plus 1 a j is equal to the integer values 0 comma 1 comma 2 etc if we want to calculate this energy in a unit of per centimeter that is given by the equation b into j into j plus 1 where this b is called as the rotational constant which is given by h upon 8 pi square i into c now if we apply this equation for a given diatomic molecule for the different values of rotational quantum numbers we may calculate its energies at a particular value of a j suppose if we take for consideration j is equal to 0 if i substitute this j equal to 0 in this equation then it gives us b into 0 into 0 plus 1 so that value comes out to be 0 so we can say that for a given diatomic molecule at a rotational constant j equal to 0 has the value of rotational energy is equal to 0 if i substitute j is equal to 1 in this equation then it becomes epsilon j in per centimeter is equal to b into 1 into 1 plus 1 so that gives us a value for 2b so we get here the value of rotational energy is equal to 2b now if we substitute the value for this rotational constant j equal to 2 again if i substitute these values in this given equation and if we again solve it so that value comes out to be 6b again if i substitute this rotational constant number j is equal to 3 then the value comes out to be 12b so we can say that in this way we may calculate the rotational quantum Uh, rotation energies in a per centimeter for various rotation quantum number for a rigid diatomic molecule so this is the calculation of this rotation energy levels for a molecule now this is called as the allowed rotation energies in a per centimeter for different values of j now after the solving this particular rotation energies for the different values of j we may <coughs> study now the different allowed rotational energy levels for a rigid diatomic molecule so for this purpose we have to study these simple figures in which the different values of j are given starting from 0 1 up to this j equal to 5 and the respective values of their rotational energies are given that is a epsilon j in the per centimeter so if we look towards j equal to 0 it has the energy is equal to 0 for the rotational quantum number 1 it has the energy is equal to 2b so in this way these are the different allowed rotational energies for a diatomic molecule having their respective values of this epsilon j now these are called as the allowed rotational energy levels on the another hand if we look towards this figure b this gives us the different allowed transitions possible for a diatomic molecule so first of all if we consider this transitions from j equal to 0 to j equal to 1 it has the first possible transition for this molecule on the another hand if we consider the transitions from the rotational quantum number j equal to 0 to j equal to 2 this is a second possible transition for it so in this way these are the all possible transitions for a rigid diatomic molecule for the different values of this j after that if we consider the spectrum for this molecule it has this type of the spectrum in which these are the different type of the lines are obtained and these are called as the absorption lines absorption lines for it and these lines are possible for this molecules 
the first line is obtained at the value for this 2b the second line is obtained at the value of this 4b third at the 6b 8b 10b and 12b so if we look toward these values in per centimeter we get an idea in between the two lines the difference is of 2b in between the two lines the difference is of 2b in each and every lines so this is the spectrum for a given rigid atomic molecule in which the different lines are obtained at a at a fixed distance of this 2b so this figure is nothing but the collection of the allowed rotational energies they are allowed transitions as well as the spectrum for the rigid diatomic molecule so in this lecture we just look towards the calculation of the rotational energies in the unit of per centimeter for the different values of this rotational constant j the various possible values once we calculate these values we are interested to study the different allowed rotational energies in per centimeter these are these are the different allowed rotational energy levels these are their allowed transitions and this is the spectrum for the rigid diatomic molecule now after this we are interested to study the next point from this topic that is the merits and demerits of the microwave spectra what are the its merits and what are its demerits so we have to study it one by one so the first important merit for this microwave spectroscopy is that it is a useful technique for the molecules having the permanent dipole moment we can find out or we can study those molecules who have the permanent dipole moment we can study it by using this microwave spectroscopy the molecules like hcl the molecules like methyl chloride so these molecules have the permanent dipole moment so we may study these molecules by using this type of the techniques on the another hand if we consider its demerits so we can say that this molecule cannot uh, sorry this uh, technique cannot be useful for those molecules who have the zero dipole moment or who have the who does not have the permanent dipole moment the molecules like here n2 is there o2 is there cl2 so these type of the molecules which cannot possess the permanent dipole moment cannot be studied by this type of the technique that is a microwave technique the second important merit for this spectroscopy is that it is useful for calculating this type of the internuclear distance we may calculate or we may uh, find out the internuclear distance for only the simple molecules if we consider these simple molecules only we can calculate it by using this microwave technique on the another hand if our molecule is a complicated one we cannot calculate its internuclear distance by using this microwave spectroscopy and the last important merit of this microwave spectra is that it is useful for those substances which is present in a gaseous state if your compound is present in a gaseous state or if it get converted into the vapor state then and then only we can study that molecule or that substance by this microwave spectroscopy now why this is so because we know that if if the molecule or compound is present in a gaseous state it has the free rotation it has the free rotation around its axis and due to this free rotation we can study its rotational motion and for this purpose this spectroscopy is operative only when the molecule or the substance is present in a gaseous state or in a vapor state so these are nothing but the important merits and demerits of this spectroscopy that it is operative for those compounds which have the permanent dipole moment it is useful for those compounds which are simple in nature and this is useful for the substances which are present in a gaseous state so this is a simple point merits and demerits of the microwave spectra so in the current lecture we discuss about some important aspects regarding this microwave spectra we have to calculate the rotational energies in unit of per centimeter by using the equation bj into j plus 1 so these are the <coughs> different allowed rotational energies in per centimeter for different values of j nextly we discuss here the different allowed rotational energy levels they are allowed transitions as well as the spectra for it and finally we completed the merits and demerits for this microwave spectra so with this 
we conclude here the remaining point we will take in a next lecture so with this i stop here thank you thank you so much